Oh, yeah. Just like everybody thought, all predictions came true. The Eagles were going to spend top of the market money on a running back. And then spend up to $7.5 million this year on a linebacker. Eagles value linebackers and running backs. Like we always say, what's up, everybody? Happy Thursday evening, just when I thought. I, I put out the, the tweet. I set up the room for the show tonight and put the kids to bed and got done. And they're asleep. And I'm like, the Eagles said, who? Devin White? Super Bowl star Devin White. Yeah, we're back tonight. So um, Devin White, the last I remember about him was last year in training camp. As with a lot of players that don't get the contract that they want, look at Hassan Reddick with the Eagles, and I hope they don't trade him because they need him. Uh, but this is the business. The NFL is the business. And unlike the other leagues where I don't have a lot of time for baseball players or NBA players that aren't happy with their contract, they have guaranteed contracts. NFL players, it's different. They have a shorter career. None of the contracts are guaranteed, and they're one injury away from literally being done. So when a player like Devin White is entering his fifth year and option year because he was a top five pick, I think he was the fifth overall pick, and he doesn't have a new contract, like maybe he was asking for too much money. Tampa didn't want to give it to him. But I understand NFL players feeling a certain way when they're playing on the final year of a contract because you're one injury away, right? So he even admitted, this is what I remember, he even admitted in training camp because he demanded to be traded. He said he wanted to be traded. And then he admitted sometime in training camp that he was probably being a little bit immature about the whole situation. But regardless, he is a player that kind of phased him out last year in Tampa. And there was probably some hard feelings about the contract. But you can't argue with the type of player that he was. And I'll just go back to the Super Bowl year. He was absolutely fantastic. He's a big reason why. That defense was the big reason why. We know Tom Brady going down there kind of changed the culture. At least that's what we think. But that defense carried them to that Super Bowl. Tom Brady was not great in some of those playoff games, in particular that, that Green Bay game. Their defense was excellent. Devin White's right there. So you're getting a guy that's entering his sixth season. He's still only, he's still only 25, I think. Uh, Delco, Steve, and I were talking before coming on. Excuse me, 26. So he is good in coverage. He isn't a – he's not a, a sackmeister, but he's also – a he's very good at getting to the quarterback still for being a more traditional 4-3 uh, type linebacker. So you get him for a year. He probably wasn't happy with the with his market that was out there because let's face it. Linebackers that are three, four linebackers like Hassan Reddick that are more or less edge rushers that might as well call them defensive ends because they're getting to the quarterback. They're the players that get paid. The traditional linebacker that is a four, three linebacker. Or they, I know they play a lot of five, two now. Those guys aren't getting the same contracts that maybe they once did. So he was frustrated. He didn't get it. He requested a trade. He played under that fifth year option. He had some injury issues last year. He got replaced late in the season. He rotated in there. Um, but this is the best linebacker that they've had since who? Not Nigel Bradham, maybe? This is the best linebacker since they've had since who? Why is that playing right now? I don't know. But this defense is now improved. Bradbury and Slay, they are what they are. I think Slay can still play at a pretty high level. They're gonna have to kind of help Bradbury. Maybe he plays more nickel and they're going to have to have another corner that plays some of the other receivers. I don't know what type of defense Fangio is going to run. I suspect that he's going to be a little bit better at putting him then putting them in situations. Thought about Bradbury to where he doesn't hurt the team. Um, but this is already a much better defense. You have CJ GJ, you have Reed Blankenship, who I think could be a, a pretty good player. Can be a, can be a good starter or a top reserve, a, a top nickel guy. And they've improved their linebackers. Now they're, they're rush, their pass rush. We know they added Huff. And I still think Hassan Reddick's going to be here, or he should be here. Josh Sweat's still here. But unless you're getting a premium pick for Hassan Reddick, there's a talk that maybe you could cut him. I mean, I don't know. He's too good of a player 
he's going to have to play play out his contract. He yeah, it, he's not making the, the twenty or twenty five million dollars a year that he wants to make, like some of these guys. But he's also with that tier down. He's not a Miles Garrett. He is in that second tier of excellent Pro Bowl type pass rushers. That's what he is. And is he a little bit underpaid? Has he outperformed his contract? Yep. Do I blame him for being unhappy with his contract? Yeah, I do. Or, or, no, I don't. I understand. Totally understand. I would feel the same way. Because if he sucked, they would have cut him by now. But he doesn't. He's really good. And I'm not letting go of a really good player when you are bolstering your team to make another run at the Super Bowl. And this is how we season. I told my wife, shop every little detail.com. I don't know if we can do it now. We should have made a, a Howie season shirt. With, you know, that picture of Howie where he's like going like, where he's got like that super cool, I'm cool Howie Roseman, or he's on the phone with his sunglasses on as the t-shirt, Howie season. But if you're an Eagle fan, I don't know how you're not excited right now, but what this team's done so far in free agency with the draft still to come, with more in free agency still out there. And when you're coming off a season as disappointing as last year was, excuse me, and how it ended, the worst thing you could have possibly done was come out and just looked for bargains or just said, hey, listen, we still have a really good – sorry, i got to hit my nose really, really – just... how do these people on TV do that when they have the, the nose itch and they just want to go to – I, I want to stick my finger up my nose. That's how bad it itches right now. But Howie Roseman came out and made some some big signings, Some gave you some sizzle. So if you're an Eagle fan, you're starting to forget about how that how last season ended when you look at some of these shiny new objects. Now, will it work? We don't know. But this isn't dream team-ish feeling. This is, well, damn, this is the best linebacker they've had since who Nigel Bradham. This is a an elite running back that carries some risk. And we'll see if he can really get back to being that top three, top five running back, or has his skills deteriorated and he's overpaid. That's a possibility. All right. There's an injury history to it. We, we know, we know the deal, but the additions they've made so far have been smart, have targeted areas that they struggled. So for everybody that says, oh, they don't value the linebacker position like me, I was telling Delco, Steve, don't be looking for a big signing in linebackers every year we do it. And we disappoint ourselves albeit they did it on a one-year contract, but they got it done and they got a difference-making player. Now let's see if he can do it this year. So as an Eagle fan, I'm super ecstatic. I'm, I'm, I'm really excited. Great job by the Eagles front office. We'll see once they put the pads on and once they start playing games, does it matter? Because there's still a lot of question marks about the head coach. There's still a lot of question marks, in my opinion, about let's see what Jalen Hurts is going to do this year. The league made some adjustments last year. How much of that was the coaching staff and the offense coordinator just not being able to compete, not being good enough? How much of that was Jalen Hurts struggling, right? We're going to find out. And I think there's some question marks there. I bet on Jalen Hurts rebounding. Uh, so we're going to find out. But let's bring in Delco Steve, who he he was I mean, he was out to dinner. His girlfriend told him about <laughs> signing at Devin White via text message. Delco Steve must be ecstatic, man. I got the insider info from uh, my girl, for sure. Really? Oh, so did she know before Adam Schefter, or, or uh, did she know at, from Adam Schefter? Uh, she, well, she is an LSU fan, so she might have. She might have been all in on uh, following Devin White where he was going. All right, we live, we hot. Kevin Kincaid of Crossing Broad is uh, is following the stream tonight, and uh, that's for good reason. He had reported earlier tonight about a move or some moves in the in the in the Fanatic lineup, ninety seven five, the Fanatic lineup. So give us a couple minutes here to talk about the Eagles, and then I will get to uh, my thoughts on that. And maybe I can share some additional details to it as well. But um, yeah, so it, it is, um, it's exciting. I am, uh, I am very happy with what the Eagles have done so far. And there's still going to be a couple of other, a uh, couple of other additions. I'm sure I'd like another pass rusher. I'd maybe like another defensive tackle, uh, but you know how he now gets to find some of the uh, some of the good value out there, and let's say this about Howie Rose, Medelco, Steve, that I don't think there's anybody better in in the National Football League as far as a GM 
than over the course of one year really being able to transform a roster because you've seen it. He can't build it. He can't build something that's that has sustained success with the same the same players. But damn, when it falls apart, he's able to rebuild it quickly. So you hope I, that that's I will one hundred percent. I've I've said this on here before. I'm not a Howie. I'm not the biggest Howie fan. I will give him credit where credit is due. He does always seem to be able to reload and fit, somehow put together a team that is ready to compete shortly thereafter uh, an implosion of some sort. So another move at linebacker, Jimmy Mo says, Devin White, physically gifted, uh, lacks discipline. I don't – do you think that they're signing another linebacker? I mean, they gave $3.5 million to that Bond guy, Zach Bond. Not Zach Braun, Zach Bond. That doesn't sound like a guy that they're not expecting to play defensive snaps. Even if he is a, like a, he's one of their best special teamers, that's to me that that's like a quasi starter. Yeah, three point five million. They, they expect yeah, all to guaranteed too. They expect him to play snaps on defense at some point in time. He might not be like the number one linebacker inside linebacker, but he's going to be in there playing snaps. Huh. All if right. not, they would have just been doing what they've been doing in years past and just picking up you know the bargain basement guys and trying to plug those guys in and hope they hit a home run. So what's next? Justin Fields straight for Justin Fields and screw everything up and turn this into a, turn this into well, a total circus. As our boy, uh, what the hell is his name? Colton or whatever his name is. He could be our new receiver, our new slot receiver. I saw it. Craig Carton. Yes, Craig yep. Carton said that he should uh, he should play receiver. Yeah, that's uh, it's it's not necessarily what you need to be saying about black quarterbacks after what's been said in the media before about them. <laughs> Yeah, not not the brightest. No, especially after a first a first round quarterback. But yeah, you know, Craig's kind of an, an idiot. And and also played well. It's not like Tebow being being a tight end or a fullback. So, but but why does no one want him? That's my question. Because I li- dude, I listen to sports radio all over the country, and I like I was listening to some Bo- some Boston sports radio. I have a show up there that I like, and the one host was saying, he's like, "Why are people obsessed with Justin Fields? He's not any good." And granted. I watched some full Chicago games this year, but I watched mostly on red zone. I, I mean, I don't know. I think he's pretty good. I don't I, know. The, the team's also trash. You got to remember that. Like, it's he's working with. It's Darwin. a bad organization. It, he doesn't have great skill guys. It's a. He, it's a he's like, the most talented like quarterback great. that organization's ever had. If you really yep. want to think about it, yeah. Which is what, and I'm not even taking this is even a shot at Justin Fields. That's pathetic. That he's. Easily the most talented the quarterback they've ever had in that organization. Yeah, and but there's also teams like Sam Darnold got a job as a starter yeah. before ju- before Fields did. Right, like the Vikings couldn't have given up a fourth round pick for Justin Fields over giving Sam Darnold ten million. Sam Darnold, Sam Darnold sucks, and I I say it every time every time a new team gets him and he didn't play last year, but when Carolina Carolina traded for him, give up a, yep. a second and whatever, and I'm like, well, Matt Rule's going to lose his job over that. And he ran around a little bit at the beginning of the year, and they won a couple games, not because of him. And then, and then it, it evened out, and they sucked. And he lost yeah, they start. Five. They went off three and zero. Right, exactly. Yeah, they were three and zero. And people were like Sam Darnold, and it's like, did you watch yeah, the I think, games? Sam I think Darnold he scored. Good in those games. I think he had two games where he scored three rushing touchdowns or something like that. Right, <laughs> or no, two no, rushing right. touchdowns. No, you're right because the Eagles the Eagles played him in like week four, and people were like Sam Darnold, like Sam Darnold sucks. He was le- and he was leading the league in rushing touchdowns at one point in that he was. <laughs> the beginning hated, of that season. <laughs> I hated Sam Darnold coming out of USC. I hated Sam Darnold after he played with the Jets. I hate Sam Darnold right now. So Minnesota, Minnesota got Sam Darnold in at least to be in the competition. You're telling me a team out there doesn't look at Justin Fields the same way? I don't know. Whatever. Yeah. Whatever. 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 All right. Man, You're telling me the Broncos or the Patriots aren't going to try and make a move for him? Like Patriots, the Patriots are no, because the Patriots have the number three pick, so they're going to draft a quarterback. They're not going to, they're not going to go after Justin Fields. The Broncos should. One of these teams should. Should the Eagles? I don't know. I'm sure. Well, I'm sure WIP and and the fanatic. If it comes down, if it comes down to you're getting them for scraps, then just give them to me. I don't care. Like I'll, I'll deal with the controversy. Yep. This this is nothing compared to drafting Jalen Hurts at number two when you just paid your franchise quarterback Carson Wentz. Yep. I mean, I don't. I look at Justin Fields and I say, if Andy Reid drafted him in Kansas City as a rookie, where would Justin Fields be right now? Would it, would would he would he be getting traded, or would he be looked at as like, wow, this guy's really good? You're a product of your environment, right? 100%. Like, like there there are there are like, if Sam Darnold was drafted by Andy Reid, would he be would he be a better player right now than than he is? Yeah, he would be. 
We could even say if Sam Darnold started off his career with Kyle Shanahan, sort of thing. If he if that was the, if he's that type of system of a quarterback, yeah, then he could have a whole different career. Yeah, uh, the, the, the Pretzel Boulevard is uh, is asking about my grand piano in the background. See what you don't know, Pretzel Boulevard is at one time I was a master pianist, but then I hurt my finger and I couldn't do it. It was Liber- it was Liberace's protege. Right. No, you're right. That's a background. Most people don't realize that, but you're uh, you do realize it. That I uh, that I had it. So I'm trying um, to find a list of uh, remaining free agents that, that are out there right now. Yeah, I'm just trying to get rid of this comment and I can't find it. You're telling me Mark's plays the piano. Sorry, there it is. All right, beat it, Pretzel Boulevard. Uh, so I mean, so what's left? I, I'm with. You. I think we need a D tackle. I definitely think we need a D D tackle. So they signed it. They signed two offensive linemen, right? They got some depth on the offensive line. They also have it. They also have the draft picks. They have two second round draft picks. They have a first round draft pick. What they 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 picked up some draft picks. The um, so they have a third now that they gave up before because of the compensation, the comp picks. Yep. Um. So yeah, it, it's um, it's a good spot to be in. They could still use one of those draft picks to uh, to to get somebody else, but you, you would expect at least one more decent signing. I don't know. I don't know if it's going to be any starters. They got a third wide receiver. They need a second tight end, but I don't know who that's going to be. So, I mean, it feels like that. Feels like that they're they're done. I thought they were done yesterday before this happened. But the again, these one year contracts. Howie's good at the one year contracts. Last year they didn't work out as well, but you take another shot. It's only money. I'm sure it's not. I'm sure it's a one year contract that has these other voidable years. So you're not really. Right. Not or really, the bonus is built yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. He, he cooks up these contracts. So, um, all right. So, so, so far, everybody, good. Thumbs up, thumbs down so far. Like double thumbs up, like Cisco and Ebert, two thumbs up. Del what Coast about Steve? a guy like, what about a guy like Clayus Campbell bringing him in? Nice veteran to Chris Carter and, uh, or Chris Carter, Jalen Carter, <laughs> Jalen Carter, and Jordan Davis. <laughs> Uh, sure. Yeah, no, I, you, I, you, yeah, you could bring in a bunch of veteran players. I, I, I want a DJ, that. I want a DJ reader as a D tackle, but the, he signed with the Lions. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, would and then it's too. a pretty much a ton of DNs and stuff that are available and I can't see them making another move at DN. Well, Sean from Pine Hill, who's a Giants fan said how he can't draft. Yeah, I think well, we gotta, all know that. No, but I think you got to look at, at the Eagles recent draft. So I'm just going to, I'm going to pull it up. Picks all time. Da, 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 da. Eagles all time draft history. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. All right. Jalen Carter. And that pick was pretty much see, but like, made can we, for him. I was going to say, can we like, exclude the ones that are just like layups? It's made for him. It's made for him. Nolan Smith doesn't look good so far. Sidney Brown looks like a, a really good pick in, in the third round. The rest of the guys, it's they were later round picks. It's, it's too hard to tell right now. Right. Jordan Davis. He, I don't think he's a bust, but no, but there was better players available. Not exactly happy with it, but I don't think it's terrible. Cam Jurgens, all appearances, that was a good pick, right? The Kobe Deem seems like a bust. All right, Devontae Smith. I also kind of fell on him, fell on made, him. made for him, but he would so he they were able to trade out of the pick, pick up the additional pick, yep. and then trade back up to get him. So you do have to give Howie credit for that. That he was able to yeah, maneuver he, around he, and get an he additional first around. rounder. Yep. Landon Dickerson, did. great, great pick. I mean, they he he's, they made him the highest paid offensive guard in league history. He's a Pro Bowler multiple times. Yep. Milton Williams in the third round is is a good pick, right? I mean, that's not that's fine. A, yeah, that's he's fine. Been, he's been a fine rotational player. Right. And so that that's the last that's the last three years. Uh, Jalen Rager obviously is a bust. Oh, I will say I will say in the in the last few drafts he's been substantially better. Oh, if you looked at the last decade. The early part of the decade is terrible compared to the last few years. And it killed the team. Yeah. And when you don't draft, then you have to go out and you have to fill holes with free agency. And that's never a way, never a place you want to live. And, so, and, you, and you think about that Super Bowl year, they, not one of those bad, one of those first co- uh, one year contracts went south. Yeah. Like all the, every veteran they brought in hit. Like I say that, like, I will never, tr- I will never, like degrade winning that Super Bowl or how they got to that Super Bowl, how they won it, what they did in the offseason to get to it. 
But I equate that season too. That was the luckiest roll on a craps table ever. Every move yep. they made hit. Every play call, every risk they took hit. Everything was, hit. Everything hit. You're and right. Fine. Uh, if that's how I win, my team wins a Super Bowl, great. Am I going to sit there at a craps table and be like, oh, I won 10 grand and be like, oh, but it was really lucky and be mad about it? No. Going to be like, thank you very much. Have a good day. It's the, and uh, I think they got very lucky that year. But yeah, they, that no, year they did. Hit. No, but you, like you can't. That's why I say you can't. Like they can't sustain success this yes. way. They and they tried the following year. They tried to do it again. It was never going to happen. But yeah, Chris Long. I mean, um, the, Patrick Robinson was a one-year contract. He was excellent, and he left. New, he left for New Orleans. He never did anything after that, right? Yep. Like really, none of those guys. Garrett Blunt was out of the league. He went to Detroit the following year. Corey Clement was never anything again. Jay Jay. Um, and Jay, Jay was pretty much done. The Eagles brought him back at one point, but they're pretty yep. much done. And so, like, you're right. It, it was. So, what That was the was, last good year of Alshon. I know it wasn't a one-year deal, but it was the last good year of Alshon. But, yeah, because they re-signed him after that and it screwed him. Yeah, yep. it, it wasn't sustainable. But here's what you can sustain. The line. The offensive line. Yep. That, that's and been, the defensive line. And that's been, that's been sustained for years. Yep. And that's what they're counting on. Nope. But see, my thing is with them, with that is, if that's your talent, if that's where you're good at evaluating players, you should be hitting on those guys in the second, third, fourth round that become stars. Like I And I know they've done that with Sweat and Dickerson and uh, Samalu was a third round pick. But uh, like, but they, they obviously use a lot of that capital in the first round and they don't take the blue chip guys that aren't in their position group that they normally target. Right. And those are the, so like if you're hitting on these offensive linemen and defensive linemen later in the draft because you're good at evalu- evaluating those players, then you should be are. able to take those skilled players in the first round that are just like you know they're going to be hits. All right. So, St- Steelers, the Steelers can't, they never have great offensive lines, right? Yep. The Steelers always have at best av- average offensive lines, right? Maybe some years they have they have above average. I know P- Pouncey was an all time center or yeah. whatever, but for when the most they part, was a center, they were one of the best. They right, one the best right. Line. But for the most part, they they yeah, can draft and average. develop defensive ends. They can normally receivers. get corners, receivers, mid round draft pick receivers. They can draft. They're amazing. Back. Yes, at yes. receivers, but they're not great at the line. The Eagles are great at the line. The Eagles can't draft corners or wide receivers. Yep. And, and Devontae obviously is was the tenth pick, and he's a little bit of a little bit different. But yeah, so yeah, he's also the Heisman Trophy receiver c- coming out that year. Every organization has their strengths and weaknesses. Every GM has their strengths and weaknesses. And there's no doubt that Howie's isn't drafting and like drafting his talent evaluation. Isn't what makes him one of the best GMs in the league. It's, it's the other stuff. Right. And I mean, do you think that it's by accident that he started drafting Alabama and Georgia guys that he started drafting? No, we were saying that they listened to WIP. They said, you know what? Why wouldn't I draft Georgia guys? Well, because some of those Georgia guys aren't very, aren't as good as you think they are. But like, but a lot he, of them are. <laughs> That's the thing. <laughs> he's been willing to adapt, just like with the linebacker and the running back. They won't spend money on a running back. They won't spend money on a linebacker. Now they just done it. We'll see if it pays off. But they are willing to adapt. So, I will give I will give him credit for that by a hundred percent. All right. He does not have a lifetime contract, and I will I will dispute that until I'm not talking about sports anymore on the radio, on YouTube, or on TV. He does not have a lifetime contract. Here's why he ha- he's the GM of the Eagles. They've been to the playoffs six out of the last seven years, and they've been to two Super Bowls. If he put together three bad seasons in a row, you think Jeffrey Lurie's going to keep running them out there? He's going to fire them. Howie Roseman keeps his contract? Keeps his job? I think, he's he got black, I think he's got blackmail on freaking uh, Jeffrey Lurie. I think he's really good at his job, and the Eagles have been in the playoffs six of seven years. I don't he, think he should have gotten to this point where he could be in the playoffs for six of seven years, though. He should have been fired before that. Why? When? Because he couldn't draft for shit in the but beginning he, of his he, career. He took over for Chip, and they won a Super Bowl a couple years later. I know, I know. Right, and and then it, and it fell apart. I don't and, like giving him shit, credit. All right, I don't like giving him credit. It's toxic. There's no doubt that that. that so, so, let me be. Well, honest. he sabotaged Chip too. Let's be honest with that. Let me be honest. I don't really like Howie 
I, I think I think Howie, when they have success, is really arrogant. I, I'm, not, I'm not a big fan of Howie. I'll just be honest. I'm not I a big agree. fan of I, Howie, right? Yep. But I, I also have to give him credit that he's good at his job, right? I think I think he I think he's an arrogant kind of a, a dick, um, but he's good at his job. And as a fan, all I really care about is what can give what can give my team the best chance at winning. And he makes mistakes. He's not the best guy in the draft, right? And what he's good at is when his back is up against the wall and everybody's counting him out or everybody's ready to ready to get him and kill him. There was a freaking sign hanging across the street from WIP Studios that said, Fire Howie. It was spray painted in orange spray paint so we could see it. I hung it. You no, probably no. did. You had to climb up the, the thing. I was just it looking was at it. It was an orange for a reason. <laughs> But you know what he knows better than than I would say any anybody in the league, and he and he's got relationships, and guys guys are they'll they'll say it about him. They'll be like, when Howie comes calling, you have to be like, all right, like, what does he want? He knows value, and he knows the market, and he knows how to get maximum value out of trades. Look at the trade he made with with the Saints. Saints gave up a first and a second round draft pick to move up in the draft. They had those three first round draft picks, right? Any, any, oh, they got it. They got an extra pick too. They got it. They really just swapped firsts, but they, they got it. They, they got an they additional, got an additional first. Se- well, no. So, so what they did, so we traded two firsts. We traded, they moved up in the one spot or the one pick and then took our second or the third pick. And then they gave us the first round pick the next year, but the extra pick was the second round pick. So, two first round picks were traded by both teams. Let me see here. They swapped one, and we gave them the extra one, and then they gave us one the next year. He traded 16 and 19. Right. For, for, five, for five picks, for 18, for the a pick. first, and a second. Right. So the number of firsts are the same, so they got an extra second by moving the stuff around. Remember we thought that first-round pick from the Saints that year was going to be like a top-five pick? because they Oh, it was, look, it was looking so good at <laughs> the beginning of the year. It was looking so good at the beginning of the year. I was, I was, I was eating so much crow for Howie Roseman at that point. Yeah, I yeah, will yeah, yeah. fully admit it. I was eating crow. I'm like, if they end up with a top five pick, then I'm done. And of course, it all, all fell apart. They, yeah, because the know, Saints went it. on a run, and they beat us. Yeah. Or yeah, they beat us to get the yeah. you know, they did. A, make a worse pick. It was the worst the one pick. game. Of the, the one game of the year you really had. Taysom win Hill was that one. Taysom Hill, unbelievable. All right, so listen, I, I got I to gotta duck out a little bit early tonight because I'm doing uh, I'm doing Fox 29, their fantastic sports show. So I have to be down at Center City no later than 11 o'clock. So, I, I mean, maybe like like 10 minutes early, about 9.50 or so. I'll duck out of here. I know, I know a lot of people were, um, were, were asking about the, um, the story that was out there. So Kevin Kincaid of Crossing Broad had, um, had reported. I don't know if Kevin's still on here. He might have already dropped off. Because he doesn't normally tune into the show, but when I put out there that I'm going to speak about the fanatic and some lineup changes, so let me just um, let me bring it up here. It was brought to my attention yesterday that that the fanatic was teasing uh, major programming announcement. So there is going to be there is going to be a change to the lineup, and I was not going to share particulars. This is something that I've known about here for at least the last ten days, and. I'm I'm not a reporter. Of course, everybody knows that. But I also don't want to blow up the spot of somebody who might be moving to a new day part. So I was waiting for somebody else to report it before I was going to talk about it. I was even going to mention it and say, like, hey, I hear that. Because I a couple of weeks ago, Steve, I talked about it to where I said that, like, new lineups come and it just seems like that they're going to they're going to shuffle the, the deck chairs. Uh, so here's what's being reported by by Kevin Kincaid of Crossing Broad. Uh, it says, I'm hearing Pat Egan tonight's, Bob Cooney to middays, and Andrew Salchunas to mornings to work with John Kincaid. Just for the record, Egan and Salchunas are both off my intern tree. Just saying. Uh, best show ever remains Tyrone, Ricky Bow, and Jen Scordo. So that's not affected at all. So Pat Egan moves from mornings to, uh, to nights. And I guess they're sliding another producer or another another microphone in. I'm not even actually uh, sure about that. But the big news here is that is Kevin Kincaid's reporting that he's hearing that Mike Missinelli is the guy to work that's going to be working with Bob Cooney. 
So Mike Bissonelli makes his return to 97.5, the fanatic. So here's, here's what I can tell you that that is absolutely something that I have heard. And that while it's not a done deal yet, it is being, um, according to my fanatic sources, both uh, on and off the air, both in programming and not in programming, that Mike Bissonelli is returning to the fanatic and he will be co-hosting with Bob Cooney middays and Andrew Salchunas and John Kincaid will be uh, mornings and Andrew Salchunas will be actually driving the show. will be leading the show. Nice. Good for him. And, uh, and Pat Egan tonight and the, uh, and the afternoon show is not touched. So as a lot of people are, are pointing out, it's an ele- a presidential election a year which has uh, has shown to be the downfall of Mike Missanelli, which is Trump and talking about politics. So, I mean, it's it's honestly, it's um, it's interesting because my understanding was even a couple of weeks ago, this, I think that they were trying to figure out what to do middays a couple of weeks ago. And Mike came in to the picture, I would say in the last two weeks. And I had talked to Mike, a couple of weeks ago, it sure as hell didn't seem like that this was something that was being talked about then. Cause you know, Mike and I talk and we text and we have a relationship. I haven't heard from him in a couple of weeks, which isn't unusual. And I didn't bother him with this. I was cause he's not going to tell me anything anyway, but I can tell you as of, I don't know how many weeks ago, I don't think that this was something that certainly wasn't done. This got done here recently. So the real question is, what does this do to the competition between WIP and 97.5 The Fanatic? First of all, let me say this, that I think it's an excellent move for The Fanatic, that the WIP, when you look at their lineup and Joe and Hugh, certainly I like their show. I think that they're very good. But if you look at the ratings, I think that that if I was going to attack WIP, I would do it with a strong midday show. It's tough because the lead-in is very important to your show, and 97.5 Mornings isn't doing well, and maybe Andrew can help that. But to have a lead-in to your show that's doing poorly and is getting crushed by WIP is difficult to then rebound from that. But this gives the Fanatic the first real chance since Mike left to win a day part. The Fanatic has not won a day part ever from 6A to 6P except for Mike. I would say without Mike. Well, yeah, with the, like no show has ever beaten WIP from mornings to middays to afternoons. The camera used to win uh, when he followed Mike at night. But outside of that, no day parts ever won. And right now, I, and I haven't, I, I haven't seen ratings since I left, but we were you know, in, in afternoons, WIP were k- killing it, crushing it. And mornings was crushing it. So middays was lagging, lagging behind a little bit. And that's understandable based on two new hosts coming on and – yeah, like everybody knows Hugh and Julio has been on the air, but still it's like sometimes you have to expect a little bit of a growth growth period. Right. So I think it makes a lot of sense that they brought Mike on. I'm a Mike Missinelli fan. I think he's, he's still very good. And he is by far my all time Philadelphia sports radio, my favorite Philadelphia sports radio host other than me. Uh, so I think, I think it's a, I think it's a great move. I do. I think it's a great move for the fanatic. Do I think they can beat WIP? Um, I don't. I don't think they will, but they may make them nervous. They may make them nervous, and they're certainly going to – I'll be curious to see what the dynamic is between Bob and and Mike. I really like Bob Cooney. I do. I think I think Bob's awesome. I would work with Bob. Uh, he, he's, got a, he's got a Philly personality to me, uh, and, and I like Mike. So it's all about now with, with talk radio – People join you and it doesn't matter to me. It doesn't really matter the name and everything else. If people enjoy listening to you, they're going to listen to you. And that's about great chemistry. Ike and I had great chemistry. You put Jack in there, the three of us had great chemistry. And that's what made the show special. So just putting a dominating personality like Mike and a, and a, and a guy like Cooney on the same show, it has to also work too. So I don't know what it's going to sound like. And it might take some time. But it is, um, I think it's a great move by the Fanatic. So I, I'm, you know, I, I, I give them a, a round of applause. And uh, it, it probably took some, um, you know, it probably took some, some from Joe Bell, the market manager, 
probably took some like, hey, listen, we didn't part on good terms. Mike and I didn't part on good terms, but you know, let's let bygones be bygones and let's do what's best for the station. I'm sure Mike's really happy to be back on the air. So um, I'll be curious to see what what it. Wonder what you thought about it there, Dubco Steve. What when was the last time Mike had a co-host? That was what I was thinking of. I I Anthony. I always, when was that? Two thousand and before when he left WIP. Two thousand five. When he that's when he left WIP. Yeah, he so he yeah. worked with Stephen A in, in he worked with Stephen A in New York, but he was Stephen A's it was Stephen A. Smith and and show with Mike as kind of the co-host. Right. So it was more like when I worked with Mike, where it was Mike's show and I was the number two Mike. Mike was the cl- me, me to you right now. Right, exactly, exactly. Yeah. So Mike hasn't had a co-host. I mean, and honestly, I was a little bit surprised that they didn't go with Mike and Andrew. But I guess I guess Tunis had shown enough to management and to Scott Masteller that he deserved the shot. And I'm happy for Andrew. I think he's very talented. Oh, Andrew, Andrew was awesome to me when I was an intern at the Fanatic. Great dude. Yeah, he's a great dude. Yeah, he's awesome. I'm I'm so happy for Andrew. So, but my you asked me my opinion, but my thought process on it is Mike, I only know Mike as a solo host or with like a producer, you know, like what we're, we were just talking about. Yep. And so I'm curious to see how that dynamic's gonna go with him with another like peer, like on the same level as him. Yep. I, I'm I'm curious to see that dynamic. Yeah, me too. I'm sure he's curious to see it. Because Mike's a very dominating personality when it comes to his on-air persona. Mike is also very good at setting up other people. And it's what I always talk about when I worked with him was like, it was, it was probably on air. It was the easiest job that I had as far as talking, because it's easy to play off of Mike. He doesn't mind being the bad guy most of the time. And he sets people up very well. And he's very good at what he does. But you're right. It's a different dynamic when you have a a host. And it's I, I don't think it's going to be the Mike Missinelli show with Bob Cooney. I think it's going to be Mike and Bob. Like both right. guys have have the show, which is different than clearly, you know, it's different than than having a sidekick. Or like when I worked with Anthony, it was the Anthony Gargana show. It wasn't Anthony and John. Yeah. So that's different. I actually have, I see someone out there putting uh the Steve and Mike show up there. Steve Fredericks and Mike Missinelli. Hold on. If you want to look at, at the keychain, hopefully this comes up. That is a Steve and Mike <laughs> keychain. SM show from back in the day. Eh, it disappears because vintage. Vintage. I actually bought it at a uh, WIP had a had a, a charity event where they took everything like out of storage that they had and we all donated items. And one of the things was an SM, a Steve and Mike keychain. Oh, um, uh, I think I worked, I think I worked one of those. Was that at the PJs and uh Jersey, uh, a black horse pike or whatever. No, it was, uh, it was at, no, it was in North Wales. I think at a uh, place had closed since well, then. I worked one of them and I've set it up and I came across a Brian Boucher Boulevard flyers, like parking sign. I'm like, that's mine. Put right. it right out, put it right. In oh, my really? <laughs> yeah, they, so. No, no, but they did a second one. You're right. They did a second <laughs> one. Yeah. It's sitting upstairs in my room. I was like, that's, that's not going up for sale. That's just not making it in the building. They did a second one. Uh, so what was I just going to say? So here, here's where, here's the worry. And I'm sure they had conversations about politics and whatever else. Mike can't help himself. Nope. And God forbid Donald Trump wins, wins the election, which by the way, <sighs> it could, I mean, not only could it happen, wouldn't you agree that it, it is likely to happen? Probably. Right, I, mean, I hate it's, politics. I hate it meets, politics, man. dude. Me too. I I want to bury my head in the sand with with both of these geezers that are running for president. It just makes me. There sick. should be an age cap. Like if there's an age floor, there should be an age cap. Right. Um. No, there should be, and it, and it shouldn't be eighty years old. It should be no. Like, it should be like sixty five. Yeah, sixty five agreed. But you, eighty year what old. It? It's four. It's it's forty. It's, it's thirty five now or forty five now. To get, 35 to, to get in the Congress, I believe it's it, well, it, it's 35 to be president. Yep, yeah. So 35 to 65, you get a 30 year window. If you're president already, you could go past 65. That's it. If that, you get the boot, I am not talking politics right now. I am saying I hate politics. Yeah, we're literally saying so. I'm screw out. It. 
I'm out on politics. And you'll never hear me talk about politics on uh, on any one of my shows. That is not why you people tune in to listen to anything that we do. All right? I hate him. Hate so, him. <laughs> it's Kevin Kincaid. So, <laughs> yes, he, Mike's going to bring on AOC. So, that has to be that has to be a concern. Does anybody really believe that Mike's going to going to not tweet about Trump or the election? He can't help himself. And he's nope. very passionate about it. So, we'll see. I right, so a, a lot of people have asked and people when I when I tease this about the new lineup at the Fanatic, a lot of I got a lot of direct messages saying are you announcing this? And it's like, no, it's not me. It's definitely not me. I couldn't even do it. I couldn't. I can't even legally speak to him now because of the terms of my WIP contract. But here, so here's what I know that I and I can only say this because Harry said this on a podcast with me. Harry said that he did speak with Scott Masteller, and I don't like. I don't know. I don't know why the fanatic wouldn't go back to some of their classic personalities like a, Har- like Har- a Harry Mays or a Jason Ratitas. I'm big fans of both of them. I love Harry. I, I, Harry's I wish, amazing. I wish I could have worked with Harry. Really? I, it's, it, it sucks because I, I don't know if I'm ever going to get to work with him on radio. I always wanted to work with Harry. Harry, I think he's, he's perfect for what I want to do. Uh, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I never worked for the fanatic when they were owned by Beasley. Uh, I, I can't speak to what they're looking for. I don't think you can argue that the station it has taken a real plunge since a lot of us left. Um, so uh, I guess the the big question is, can, can Mike be a part of kind of the rebuilding of the fanatic? And it's not- Yeah, do what he did 15 years ago. They're not exactly going with the youth movement because I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna give Mike's age. <laughs> Mike's, you know, Mike's been around for a while. Mike's well, if you're almost fifty and you were his producer, well, how about this? Mike and my mom were born in the same year. I'll just, I'll just say that. <laughs> and my, and my mom had me when she was young too. All right, and I'm not almost fifty. Shut up. You're almost fifty, buddy. Sorry, I hate to break it to you. I'm closer to fifty than forty. That's for sure. But um. You're um, you're in you're in your late forties. You're not even in your mid forties anymore. You're in your late forties, <laughs> right? Um. So, like, I I don't, you know, if I was running, if I was running the fanatic, it would certainly be a lot different than what they're trying to do. But I can already see the difference in the station since Scott Messeller took over, which is a a more of a focus on the eagle, the Eagles, and I know they're the home of the Sixers or whatever. Let me tell you what that does for them. Doesn't do anything for him. It's jack shit. It it, it really doesn't. He it's, like he the 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 Sixers like when they make the playoffs, it's good for their ratings from watching the games and things like that. Yeah. The, the actual bump that happens when the Sixers are are hot goes to WIP now. It doesn't go to the Fanatic. It goes to WIP. They may get they may get a bump because they have the games and stuff. The Fanatic or the WIP actually gets more of a bump than they do. So, um, you know they like. People want want Eagles talk. I'm not telling you that you need to do Eagles 24 seven every day like WIP does, but you also can't act like, hey, well they do WIP. Let me focus on doing something else. No, that's how you lose. So, and so like I've seen a renewed focus on that. Scott knows what he's doing with that kind of stuff. They're doing more Eagles stuff. They're doing Eagles specialty shows at night. Uh, so like I, they're, they're headed in the right direction, but and this is me having to be honest because this is what I'm going to do. And I'm, I'm not going to blow smoke. Like their, their morning show has been a flop and bringing in and- Andrew Shalchunas, who I like, and I like John Kincaid. It is, it has not worked. So unless that's going to change the show and you're going to do better, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough to do anything than what you're doing right now. And honestly, afternoons, uh, like I, I, I I occasionally we hear somebody say like I like Tyrone. I don't I, I don't have a lot of, I don't see a lot of people that are that are that are praising Tyrone a whole heck of a lot. So do you think the Mike Miss uh, uh, Cooney midday show helps get a bump for the afternoon show at Fanatic? Um, it doesn't hurt. That's for sure. Yeah, well, it definitely doesn't. It's never going to be a negative for it. But do you think it gives them any 
any headway into Jack I, Eich and I don't Eich. think I don't think that I don't think it'll do much. They're still the highest performing show in the station. I, that that should probably change. Uh, but other than that, I think that you're still you've improved yourself. You have, and you're attacking you're attacking the day part that you have the best chance at winning. Is it enough? I just don't know. Uh, also, Bill Colarulo, who he's been on this show right here. He's my buddy. He was in for Tyrone. He's great. He's great. He, he was in for Tyrone on Monday and Tuesday. And let me say this, that I heard additionally from a lot of staffers, both behind the scenes and that, that are in programming. Their reaction was, because they texted me, because I was like, hey, you know, like I know Bill. He's going to be really good. And like... Wait till you hear him. Because like, hey, he knows you. Like, who is this guy? So he just came in and started doing weekends. He wasn't on the radio at all. Right. And he started doing weekends. And I was like, trust me, this guy's a star. And he did Monday and Tuesday this past week. I don't know how Tyrone takes off Monday and Tuesday of of uh, free agency. Start of free agency. <laughs> well, he also took off the – the it was the bye week of the Eagles, but he took off the um, – it was the, the Phillies played the night before. And he had the following day off because it was the bye week of the Eagles. But anyway, here's what I heard from everybody. It was the best, it was the best, best show ever that they've heard, they've they've ever heard. Everybody the best that, show ever? Yes. The buzz, the buzz in the station. Yes. The best best show ever? Yes. The buzz at For the Monday station. And the buzz at the station was wow. Bill's really good. And that was the best show they've had that we've heard. Well, the when he was on with us, it was the first time I substantially like actually listened to him for a sustained period of time. He's amazing. He's fluent. He knows what he's talking about. He's like eloquent when he was he like mesmerized. He draws you in. He's a great speaker. He is. I, 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 I can listen to him talk about anything. Yeah, I can listen to him talk about politics if I actually had to. And the thing is, he's got a personality to him too that you yes. don't really get because he's talking about yep. football so much. Now yep. Bill's awesome. So I'm not worried that Bill, I'm not going to get to work with Bill because the Fanatic's going to try to snatch him up and move him to uh to a major day part. I was worried they're gonna they're gonna make a middays. Cause I I love Bill. I would like to do something with Bill in the future. But anyway, so that's kind of the that's the vibe I got last week was or earlier this week was like, yo, Marks, you were right. Bill's unbelievable. Like those shows were unbelievable. Like he's really, really good. Now you also have to understand that when you get great content, like the Eagles signing Saquon Barkley and the first couple of days of free agency, it's, it's easier to do shows, but 100%. still it's, but still when, 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 when you're given filet, you still got to make a good meal and you made a good meal and he's all about the Eagles. So whatever. All right. Um, yeah. So, so, so big deal. Again, this is being reported. If Kevin Kincaid, if this is not tr- accurate, blame Kevin Kincaid, not me. Because it's his report. I wasn't going to bring it up. I was going to tease it and say, I know what's going on. But he brought up Missing Ellie's name. So I have heard the same thing. So there you go. All's fair now. And, and listen, I wonder if maybe Bill didn't open some eyes around the station with management. I don't know that. And I haven't been told that at all. But I think it's hard not to not to have seen the reaction from everybody else. That's all I'm trying to say. There you go. So what's wrong, Vince? You and Kevin Kincaid are uh, your adversaries. He blocked you on Twitter or something. That's Tyrone that blocks a lot of people on Twitter, but whatever. And I was actually, I was looking for, I was looking for a picture of Mike to put up for the, for the The thing. Yeah. The thumbnail for the, the podcast. And it came up with a, like a story came up that said that Mike unfollowed Tyrone. And I was like, yeah, well, he unfollowed me too. So it's not really saying a whole lot. I, the fact that those are like stories now, I hate that shit. Like, like Justin Fields stopped following the Bears. Why do I care? Like, why? Like, right. Exactly. That's what, cause that's what they do. There's a new level. This, there is a new level of the sports talk you're saying. I don't know what that means. Anyway. All right. Well, listen. I got I'm a big uh, listen. I'm a pretty big deal myself. I may not be going back to the fanatic, but I can tell you this that I'm going on TV tonight. How many of you people 
can say they're going on TV tonight. Not many or none of you. At absolutely none of us. Yeah. So pff, to all you. All right. And I have, I have a couple of things that I can share relatively soon because again, it would be illegal for me to discuss anything outside of the terms of my contract. So I'm obviously not talking to any entity right now that would be considered a competitor to WIP because that would void, that would be in violation of my contract and I could be sued. But I will, uh, I, I hope to be sharing some details because um, I think there's some things out there that I could possibly be doing in the next couple of weeks. All right. As far as what's going on with Anthony Gargano, Anthony Gargano has his, his PHLY, the all city stuff. Uh, that is, from my understanding, he like his non-compete ends, I think like later in March or maybe even in April. So I would assume he's going to be doing some stuff coming up here. So there you go. Also, um, Steve, a lot of people at the beginning of the show, but we had so many things to get to. We're talking about, did you put up a bench press uh, on Instagram? Are you giving content on Instagram? Uh, yeah. Well, that was, that was even a light one. That was a 275. Two, yeah. 275 bench. How many times? For one. Oh I mean, man. I only weigh 175 soaking wet. So. Holy cow. Yeah. That's unbelievable. My one rep is 290. Didn't get it the other day, though. I bench 40. 40, there you go. 40 pound dumbbells when I, I do them at, uh, when I do them at home. That's I'm glad I'm you like. could glad you could almost bench your weight, buddy. I know it's well, I can I can do lots of push-ups. <laughs> I, I can do 40 push-ups in a row. Well, there you go. That's impressive. So we didn't play the Saquon Barkley stuff. We can do it tomorrow. We can, we we can trash uh, Joe, James we, Franklin. Tomorrow. We didn't trash James Franklin, which we both want to do, which is... Yes, I am excited great. for that tomorrow. Which is great. <laughs> um, and Steve, just just so you know, John Jay is not... He's, just, he's impressed with your, with your benching. It's not anything personal. Thank you, John. Appreciate sexual. it. <laughs> there you go. All right. Everybody... We'll talk to you tomorrow. Sorry, I have to go on TV. I have to drive down the channel twenty. Sorry, I'm a sorry, I'm a big deal. I'm a big deal. So if you if you want to watch it live, it's eleven thirty or eleven thirty five on Fox twenty nine. It's with Jason Martinez, not Jason Martinez, Jason Martinez, and Breland Moore. So it's a lot of fun. It's a half hour. It's it's hard hitting and fast moving. So DVR it or watch it live, and uh, and we'll be back tomorrow night at nine o'clock. Steve, get some rest, man. Yes, sir. All right, talk to you. Peace.